here we have the pattern cut out, ready to begin shaping. Our wheel is still under uh, maintenance, so we're going to be using the power hammer. So this here is our really high crown tool. We like to call it the bludgerer. Um, as you can see, it's really high crowned, nylon top. Put my ear protection on and get shaping. Now our shape is pretty much there. I'm going to drop down to a more gentle radius and swapping out the nylon top for the flat top with a nice polished face. Looking at this, I think what I'll probably end up doing is trimming this down here to get the right uh, size perspective. So I'll probably lose quite a bit off that now. So it turns out I filed this edge, the trim edge, got rid of the wobbles, and actually it doesn't need trimming. Um, it's pretty much because that will create the same shape as all round. Probably going to lose a little bit off there, probably I'd say about, about there. I'm going to use our little even line marker thingy.
know what, I don't think I'm going to foil that. I think I'm going to leave it like that, you know. So there is our first piece. So the next bit I'll probably do is this section in here. So for this piece here, I'm going to use the same diameter as this hole. So I'm codging up a uh, bit of a pattern for that diameter because it's not really essential, as you'll see. I'm going to sort of guesstimate this angle here. Now the reason for this is I wanted to check that the diameter of this pipe, when it's cut at an angle, that it's not going to be too shooting too far over, you see. So it'll, it will fit in and leave a nice room around. So it's going to be roughly that kind of size. I'll probably leave this long on the actual one. Because this is rough, I'm just going to use a pen. It's this distance from here to here that's the important bit. Now we're going to leave enough here for a flange, and I'm hoping that's going to be enough, but I guess we'll see. <laughs> Sausage or something? <laughs> the fin next as we won't be able to get to the fin uh, if we put this on first this end piece that end piece will lock that section in as it'll be really difficult to try and get in through this this way um, while this is left open to get in there now I've left these tabs uh, longer here <clears throat> because when we fold this up, up that's being folded up by the time we've stretched this round uh, it's basically to save me having to weld in a little section um, I'll sh show you on here so on the, these fins here I had to actually weld a separate little a, a separate little bit on the fin before I finally welded it onto the, the overall piece 
So to counteract that, I've added the tabs. So when I come to welding the two sides together, uh, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't need to do that. So here we have uh, two um, half fin sections. So they will eventually weld together down the center. However, what we do first is add shape along this edge. So we'll just do that now. sure that we do the other side Here we have our fin, welded down the centre, cleaned up, ready to locate. Just give the edges a file. Now locating this is, <laughs> isn't going to be a, in, done in an engineering manner. I think we're going for the artistic uh, approach, somewhere in the middle-ish. <laughs> So we've got the inner cone section made up, just the strip rolled round. The cone, reused an old template and kind of bodged it to the right side.
here is the first part, the rear section. I have extended this a little bit because I wanted that, I kind of wanted it to be a bit more dominant I suppose. Um, so I have ended up with a slightly longer stinger, um, which I think I like, it suits the, the proportions quite well. Looks more evil too.